Hello everyone, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And today I'm going to do a system setup and product review of CentOS 8 or CentOS 8, however you want to pronounce it. I thought I would uh, give that a look and see what's in CentOS 8. Um, the last time I used CentOS, which is, uh, stands for Community Enterprise uh, Operating System, um, the last time I used it, it was version 6. Um, I know that I knew that 7 was out, but I just never used CentOS 7 um, and used uh, another product instead, another distro. But I thought I'd go ahead and give CentOS uh, a look today. So this is a system setup and product review of CentOS 8. Um, first thing is, is the home page for CentOS is the secure website, www.centos.org. You can go up there find out all about CentOS. Uh, you can get to the download link to download the distro uh, and you can get to the documentation and to support if you need it. Uh, so that's the home page for CentOS 8. Second thing is, is that uh, you need to know that CentOS uh, 8 is based on Fedora and Red Hat. Now, I use Fedora because I've done a, a recent video of uh, Fedora 31 workstation I will be doing a follow-up video of Fedora 31 server. I haven't gotten to that yet. But uh, I really like Fedora 31 workstation. Uh, and it is based on Fedora and it is based on Red Hat uh, Linux as well. Now, Red Hat is headquartered in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, which is about oh, around three, three and a half hours away from where I live. Uh, so it is headquartered there. It is a for-profit organization. It is not an open source organization, so they do charge for Red Hat Linux, but they don't charge for CentOS because it is a community enterprise. Uh, so a team of uh, volunteers and developers basically develop CentOS and maintain it. And uh, thanks for that. All right. Um, its origin is in the U.S., as I mentioned. Uh, it's headquartered uh, near, uh, near Raleigh in North Carolina. And so the developers there pull from the Red Hat uh, development uh, for things. And so its repos and all follow closely with Red Hat Linux as well. So it is uh, it does take its origin from the United States. Uh, the architecture for CentOS 8 is uh, Arch 64 ARM, so ARCH64. Uh, there is also an 8664, which is what I am going to be installing today. And um, it also has a PPC 64LE as its architecture as well. All right, the desktop platform CentOS 8 is based on two uh, desktop managers or desktop environments. One GNOME version 3.x and KDE or the K desktop environment. And so both of those uh, support the desktop platform for CentOS 8. The category that CentOS falls into is it's either a desktop environment. You can get it in a, for the desktop. You can get live media as well uh, as just the installation uh, for CentOS 8. And also there is a server version of CentOS 8. Uh, you can get that from CentOS.org. And then uh, lastly, the documentation for CentOS 8 is found at wiki.centos.org. The CentOS website at centos.org, you can find here, um, if you go up on the website, you can see that the CentOS project is described there. There is a button for Get CentOS Now, uh, and then it talks a little bit about uh, the CentOS uh, operating system, the distribution as well. And then across the top, you've got the Get CentOS and About, the Community link uh, for the uh, nav button, documentation, and then there is also help available for you. And then finally, um, the CentOS Wiki is here at wiki.centos.org and uh, it talks about what is CentOS Linux. Um, it shows you the download, the, the search, the learn, the contribute, the special interest groups, how to promote CentOS, uh, how to donate to the project if you want to, and then a little bit more about it. 
is available here on the wiki. And then across the top there, you have the front page, the help, the tips and tricks, how to be frequently asked questions for CentOS if you need help there. Uh, there's a link out to events that occur uh, relevant to CentOS 8, how to contribute to it, and then there's a change log for the wiki as well. You can click on that and get that information. If you want to look at uh, package management for CentOS, it is uh, RPM based and uh, based on Red Hat and Fedora, as I mentioned. To uh, install a package from the repos for CentOS, uh, you can use the DNF command. Um, you probably are used to the YUM, the YUM, that's the Yellow Dog Update Manager. Um, that's kind of deprecated now in CentOS and it uses DNF instead and that is the dandified yum, if you will, and that's what the DNF stands for, so dandified yum. And so DNF install and then the package name is what you use to install a package. If you want to install from source, you use the DNF package management command, uh, local install, and then the package name. If you want to update the existing software on your system, you can use the DNF update package or just DNF update, as you see here for updating the entire system. If you want to remove an unwanted software package from your CentOS uh, uh, distribution, you can use the DNF erase package name for erasing specific packages, and you can separate those by commas if you want to erase more than one at a time. And then finally, to update a package list, you can click on uh, or go into the terminal and run the DNF check-update command. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, DNF update for updating the entire system. Okay, so uh, let's get into uh, the system setup and product review. Let's get into the actual review. Um, well, the actual setup and, and then review of CentOS 8. And so let's get into that. So if you want to join me, come on and come ahead with me and we'll take a look at that. Let's get into CentOS 8, system setup and product review. Okay, I'm in my um, virtual box 6.0 manager. I'm going to go ahead and install CentOS 8. And so I'm going to go up to machine and new and click on that. And let me go ahead and give this a name. I'm going to call it CentOS uh, 8 um, VM and uh, I'll just uh, take x86 64 all right and go ahead and give this thing uh, 4096 megabytes of uh, RAM which is 4 gigs and let's go ahead and create all right and let me give uh, some VDI space here. Let me go ahead and assign 50 gigabytes of VDI space. And let's create that. And now I want to go up to settings. And uh, after I click on settings, I'm going to go ahead and check uh, system. Untick floppy and select hard disk and move that up in the boot order. Go down to display and let me give this thing 128 megabytes of video memory. Uh, switch it to VGA. Uh, box uh, v, v box VGA. I select storage and uh, choose the virtual hard disk. I've downloaded the CentOS 8 x86 64 1905. It's about 6.6 .6 gigabytes in size. Pretty pretty hefty. Um, select audio and don't need to make any changes there. Network I need to change to bridged adapter and then select USB and then USB 3.0 and click OK. And I'm ready to launch this thing. So let's click Start. And uh, go ahead and get this thing launched. I'm going to click on the View, as I usually do. Select Full Screen Mode. And it's on Install CentOS. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Enter key. And uh, get this thing going. And when it boots up, um, we'll go from there. It does take quite a bit of time to install CentOS 8, um, and so we uh, I will pause the video at some point and come back when it's finished.
All right, so welcome to CentOS Linux 8.0.1905. Let's click Continue. We have English on both uh, screens here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select the uh, installation source. Keyboard is good. Language support is good. Time and date is fine. New York, America time zone. Uh, software selection is good. Installation source is okay. Well, actually, I need to change the software selection away from server to workstation. I'm not going to install the, the server here. And uh, click Done. All right, installation destination. Um, selected the uh, ATA VBox hard disk. I'm not going to encrypt the disk. Um, select that and should be good to go there for installation destination. Networking and host, I'm going to select that. Turn on the Ethernet because it is currently turned off. And um, since it's disconnected, I'm connecting it now. And I should get a, uh, an IP address. There we go, 192.168.1.236.24 from DHCP. And um, go ahead and select the done here. Uh, after I give the host name, let me change that to centos8-vm.landlocal.com. And then go ahead and select Done. Okay. And uh, that should be good to go. Security policy. We don't need any security policy there, I don't think. No. So I'm going to select um, Done here and go past it. And um, let's go ahead and begin the installation. So it's going to start its installation, but uh, I need to change, uh, I'll give a root password here. So let me go up and click on root password and put that in. And then let me go ahead and confirm the root password. All right, and done there. And then let me create a user account. So I'm going to create uh, for my full name, Dan Calloway. Username, I'm going to change to Data Pioneer, as I usually do. Um, then I'm going to put in the password and then require a password to use the account. All right, and then select Done here. So we've got a root password and a user account created. And um, so it's going to go ahead now and do its installation process. This is going to take about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and come back when it is done. Okay, so that process took about uh, 25 minutes or so, and uh, I'm going ahead and I've restarted the system. So we get into CentOS 8 and take a look at it um, and see what we have. Um, didn't realize that that was going to take quite as long as it did, but I'm glad I paused the video because I don't need you to sit here and watch the, uh, the installation take place through Anaconda. The uh, package or the install installer for, rather for CentOS 8. I, I know you guys know what an installer looks like and what installing an application looks like, so don't need to sit through that. But we're booting up now into CentOS 8, and as soon as it comes up, um, we will take a look at what we have. Um, CentOS 8 is uh, an application uh, distribution for Linux that. Uh, I've followed for many years. I started with CentOS 5 and went into 6. Uh, but with with version 7, that's when System D came along, and I wasn't too keen on System D at the time. But uh, I have since uh, picked up picked up on System D. I kind of enjoy it more than than uh, Sys uh, Sysenid 5 actually. Um, and so let's see what we have here. Uh, this boot up process is taking a little bit longer than I anticipated. Uh, hopefully it'll come up to the uh, full 1920 by 1080 p widescreen monitor presentation, 16 by 9. Uh, looks like it's getting ready to come up now. And uh, log us in. Um, here it comes, and we are getting a uh, full screen, so let me click on that and put in my password. Yep, if I can type this morning. 
Okay, and let's go ahead and sign in. And see what we have here. All right, coming up to full screen, and uh, let's see what kind of background we have. Here's our background. Uh, we'll see if we can change the background here in a few moments. Um, all right, so we have uh, across the top here, we have a calendar, um, November the 17th. We have no notifications. Um, it is Sunday. Uh, so let's come over. We have here the wired connection, and I'm wired connected here with the VM. We've got my profile here. Uh, here we have settings. Here we have the uh, lock screen. And then we have here the ability to restart or power off. I'm not going to do that. All right. And then let's come across to activities. And if you select activities, let's get into the web browser, which is uh, Mozilla Firefox, and see what we have. I'm thinking that the uh, CentOS probably has the extend extended support version for the uh, browser, the ESR, Extended Service Release. Um, okay, so we are at Welcome to CentOS, Community Enterprise Operating System. Let's come across and go to the Pancake and see what we have for a version here. So click on Help. Um, should bring up About Firefox, and we are at 68.2.0 ESR, right? The extended support release, 64-bit version for Firefox Quantum. I uh, believe that is the latest version or release of ESR uh, for Red Hat 1.0. Okay, very good. All right, and um, let's see if we have sound. Let me go out to uh, YouTube and um, get on YouTube here, and let's see if we've got um, or see what we have. Here is my Caliber eBook Management Platform. Um, video that I did. Okay, so we do have sound. Uh, very good. Let's go ahead and close the browser and uh, close the tabs here. Let's get back into activities and see what else we have. We have Evolution Mail. Not a big fan of Evolution Mail. Rhythm Box for your music. We've got files. And if I click on files, it brings up uh, this files I uh, believe this is um, trying to figure out what uh, version we have here. I really can't tell what we have. Uh, I thought I could do it from there. Okay, that's okay. I know it's files. Anyway, we've got desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, public templates, and videos. Uh, we've got the uh, Run Media, we've got the CD-ROM here for CentOS 8, Base OS, and then other locations, okay? Um, and then we can come out if we want to and go to the file system itself. i um, not going to do that right now, okay? But let's click that off and go back into Activities. We've got the Software Center. Let's bring up the Software Center. And so this is a fully featured application interface here. Um, you do have the browse the web. This is the featured web browser. We're on the all tab. We have install and then we have updates and it says it's up to date. So let me click on all. If you get out onto audio and video, we've got uh, these options here, Brazero, uh, Cheese and Rhythm Box uh, for graphics and photography. We've got GNU image manipulation, Inkscape, Xsane, LibreOffice Draw and Photos. Uh, for communication and news, we have HexChat. I'm a big IRC chat user, so I, uh, I, I'm i glad to see that. HexChat is one that uh, is available in CentOS 8. Wireshark for uh, managing or uh, monitoring, rather, the uh, packets as they cross the uh, or traverse the network. You can capture those and uh, screen those and take a look at them and analyze. Firefox web browser, we got the Pigeon Internet uh, here. We got Java, Remote Viewer, and Remote Desktop. All right, what else we have? We've got uh, for add ons, we've got the G Streamer Multimedia here. 
uh, obviously. And then for productivity, we've got LibreOffice Writer, so it's got the LibreOffice Suite, Evolution Mail, LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Base, Draw, and Impress. Let's see what version of, of well, actually it needs to be installed. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and install it. And uh, hopefully it won't take very long to install. If it does, I'll go ahead and pause it, and then we can come back when it's done. Um, but LibreOffice, I'm not a big fan of LibreOffice either. Um, I'm more of a an open office, um, you know, uh, text text or plan maker, text maker uh, type of person. I don't really like uh, LibreOffice that much. Let me go ahead and pause the video uh, and uh, let this complete the installation, and we'll get into it. Okay, so LibreOffice finally installed, and um, LibreOffice Writer, and so let's take a look at the version that we have here. Uh, so if I go up to uh, Help and About LibreOffice, you can see that we're running version 6.0.6.1, um, and so that's, uh, that is a fairly late version, so it looks like we got a pretty late version there going. All right, so let's go ahead and... Uh, Close this, and uh, don't save anything there. Let's get back into um, activities, and um, let's see. We finished up with software. I think we, we weren't completed with that, though. Um, and so we are on productivity, and I uh, believe we were finished with that, and then developer tools. And so for developer tools, we've got Dev Help, Idle 3, CMake GUI. All right, and so um, let's go ahead and close the Software Center. And let's get into um, activities here. And get back down to help. We've got a help functionality. We've got the terminal. And so with the terminal here, uh, as you can see, um, we can take a look at a few things. Let's look at a uname. R to see the kernel version we're running. We're running kernel version 4.18.0-80.11.2. Uh, uh, um, we're up to 5. Dot something right now, so it, we've got an older kernel here. Uh, let's do a DFH, and we can see the layout here of our um, VDI hard disk, 50 gigabyte hard disk that we have. Um, if, let's do a free memory. See what kind of memory usage we're doing right now. We've got um, four gigs of RAM here. We're using around 1.2 gigs um, of RAM as well. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit here and get back to activities. Let's look at uh, what we have here as far as all of our applications. We've got boxes, calculator, cheese, evolution, files, Firefox. Uh, GNU in Image Manipulation Program, LibreOffice Writer we just installed, Pigeon Internet Messenger, Rhythmbox, Settings, Software, Sundry, Text Editor, U Utilities, and Videos. If I go into Settings, you can see that we have um, four settings. We have the ability here to set up Wi-Fi, we have Bluetooth, Background, and for Background we don't have a lot, we have nothing. Actually, we just have what we have, and then we have the lock screen. Uh, but we can go ahead and install other backgrounds if we want. For notifications, we have these. We can turn those on and off. We have search capability uh, for various things that we have turned off and on and on. Region and language, uh, we can flip on that as well. And for universal access, we can select high contrast or large text if we want. Uh, turn on the visual aids, currently off for the hearing impaired. For online accounts, we can uh, access those and activate those if we like. We have a privacy feature here. Uh, sharing, we can uh, share for screen sharing and remote login. CentOS 8 VM landlocal.com is the computer name. We have the ability to tweak our sound. 
We have the ability to control our power settings. I currently have it set to never blank the screen, never or suspend the uh, automatic suspension is off. And then for network, we have connected status for Ethernet, wired. I have the ability to set up VPN. I do have a VPN server running on my Raspberry Pi, so I could set that up if I want that. Uh, for orientation, we are currently at 1920 by should be 1080, so it's 10, 1, 10 006. That's because I've got this up here. Uh, night light is turned off. Uh, we can adjust keyboard, mouse, and touchpad if you're on a laptop. I'm not. Printers, you can set those up. Currently, don't have any set up. Removal media, we can tweak that. Thunderbolt, we can uh, take advantage of that if we like. Uh, Wacom tablet, I'm not, I don't know of anybody who has a Wacom tablet that's been with Linux forever. Uh, and then color settings, we can change our VBOX monitor uh, on or off there as well. Okay, so this has been a quick look at CentOS 8. Um, available, just been released not too long ago with the Community Enterprise Linux operating system. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and uh, click on the uh, subscribe button. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you do subscribe, go ahead and click that bell off to the right-hand side, and um, that way you'll be notified every time I upload a video. So I enjoyed being with you today, and I hope you enjoyed this video on a system setup and review of CentOS 8. Have a good rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.